Hi, I'm Dexter and welcome to my channel. I normally discuss Caribbean history and genealogy on this channel, but some recent events they've been weighing on my mind and I just decided to talk about it. Um, this is going to be a little bit different to my usual videos, but please bear with me. Also, if there's any background noise, um, please forgive me. Just to summarize, on the 27th of April 2022, the sitting premier of the Virgin Islands, Andrew A. Foy, was arrested by the United States Federal Drug Enforcement Administration in Miami, Florida for conspiracy to import a large quantity of cocaine and for money laundering. The managing director of the PVI Ports Authority and her son were also arrested in connection with this conspiracy. The Affidavit filed details the conspiracy and as this is an active criminal case I can't really say very much more on this video but what I saw and read made me physically ill. You can read about it as well in all major news news publications because it's it's been everywhere over the past 72 hours. These events, they come on the heels of a commission of inquiry that was called by the outgoing governor in January 2021 for alleged corruption and poor governance in the Virgin Islands. And the report, it was delivered to ministers in Whitehall on the 2nd of April 2022. Current Virgin Islands Governor John Rankin released the 946-page report into this Commission of Inquiry to the public on the 29th of April 2022. And it shows that even prior to the arrest of the Premier, the Commissioner made an essential recommendation to suspend the constitution of the Virgin Islands and impose direct rule from London. The Minister for the Overseas Territories is flying to the Virgin Islands right now to meet with local leaders as early as tomorrow, 2nd May 2022. These events will go down in history as a, 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 a grim chapter in the history of the Virgin Islands. However, from speaking with others, I realised that very few people understand the constitutional relationship between the Virgin Islands and the United Kingdom. Now, the use of the term overseas territory is a euphemism for colony, which is what the Virgin Islands is and always has been from its inception when it was included in a grant to the Earl of Carlisle by King James I in 1627. In my video on the colonization of the Virgin Islands, I explain the genesis of the Virgin Islands colony, and um, I think you may want to watch that video before you continue with this one. I'll put a link up there somewhere. So, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland has 14 overseas territories and three crown dependencies. The Virgin Islands colony, it is an overseas territory which has a written constitution and has a devolved House of Assembly and a locally elected government led by a premier who is the leader of the party holding the largest majority in the house. However, the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, FCDO, they're responsible for maintaining national security and for the running of the civil service and appoints a governor to oversee these activities on behalf of Her Majesty the Queen. For various reasons, which I can't get into on this video, people neglect to recognise that the people of the Virgin Islands are indeed British citizens and that as British citizens should expect the same level of rights and protections as those experienced by those on the mainland. This includes transparency into how public funds are spent and confidence that checks and balances written in law are followed. Virgin Islanders, I'm, I'm speaking to you directly now. Unfortunately, what is done is done and we must now bear the consequences. But we need to learn from this. 
And although this is a very hard lesson to take, we must humble ourselves and take the advice that is being given. We have to stop blaming others for things that we, the electorate, have validated with our silence over the years. We have all heard whispers of minor wrongdoing here and there. However, what I've read in the past 72 hours, it is so damning and upsetting and a thousand times worse than I e ever imagined it could be. We should all be collectively ashamed, but simultaneously incandescent with rage for the disregard for our public offices. It is time for us to take our heads out of the sand and address this issue directly. It makes me incredibly sad that we must now deal with the tremendous consequences which will no doubt negatively affect every aspect of life in the islands and not just politically but economically. It will be difficult to accept what is happening but we must lean on one another and we have to do this in order to bear what is to come. The reason why I make these videos is to, to help West Indians better understand our collective history so that we can have a brighter future. There's a saying that those that do not remember history are condemned to repeat it. Well, the events that I spoke about earlier in this video, um, they are nearly identical to the events that occurred in 1985 when the highest elected official of the Turks and Caicos Islands, Chief Minister Norman Sanders, was arrested in a sting operation by the US authorities in a conspiracy very similar to the one uh, that Foy has been caught out by. And also in the Turks and Caicos Islands, their local government was suspended in 2009 and direct rule uh, imposed uh, after a commission of inquiry found systemic corruption there. And the former premier was later arrested after fleeing to Brazil and is still on trial for those crimes. But finally, I want to leave a word to the ministers in, in Whitehall, particularly Foreign Secretary Trust. I ask you to please remember that the Virgin Islands, it's a very small community with hundreds of years of intermarriage. And it would be very difficult for you to understand how people relate to one another because of this. It's a complex place for these reasons and you will encounter some difficulty deciphering the interconnectedness of the island. But please have empathy for the people. We are going through a very traumatic situation right now. There are good people in the Virgin Islands who have unfortunately been tarnished by the actions of a greedy, arrogant few that has led to the breakdown in the respect for law and order that our ancestors, they upheld so highly that they would rather live in, in, in poverty than, than break the law. So. That's all I have to say about this for the moment, and uh, we all need to take some, some time to reflect on, on this. See you on the next one.